Hey, I'm Brandon Lee, and this video is gonna be all about my current favorite accessories for filmmaking. So I recently posted a video about my current favorite gear. Make sure you go and check that out to learn about the camera, lenses, gimbals, things like that. Now I'm gonna be talking about some of the tiny little accessories that make my life easier as a filmmaker, and you probably never heard of some of these, so you might find them pretty interesting. So let's go ahead and get started. But before we do, I just wanna remind you that this video is overall not a sponsored video. These are my own opinions. However, I will be doing a mid-roll integration that is sponsored for Crucial SSD hard drives. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with batteries. Now, batteries may not be the most exciting thing to talk about normally in terms of filmmaking, but they're super essential. Of course, you can't do any shooting without them. And I found a specific battery that I really like to use with my Sony camera. So for the last few years, I've been shooting mainly on the Sony a7S III, and that uses the NPFZ100 type of battery. And I started off just using the Sony Info Lithium batteries, but then I needed a lot more of them and they're quite expensive. So I started experimenting with third-party batteries. I tried out a bunch of those and the ones that I ended up really, really liking, which actually I just found about a month ago, are these blue batteries from Small Rig. And there's one specific reason why I really like these batteries and you're gonna have to look close. It's because they have a built-in USB-C port right there on the battery. And that means that you don't have to plug these into a dedicated charger in order to charge them up. If you have a power bank, if you have just a cable that goes to your computer, if you have a plug that goes into the wall, anything, you can just plug that USB-C into the battery and then voila, the red light comes on and it's charging. And then when it's finished charging, it will turn green. So it's great having that indicator. It's great having that compatibility. And in my tests, it seems like the performance of these batteries is basically exactly the same as the Sony InfoLithiums. Now don't take my word for that because I haven't done any controlled side-by-side -side testing, but they seem to last just as long in my own experience shooting with them. Now, if you go do a search for this type of battery, the small rigs are not the only ones that you'll find with USB-C ports. There are also a couple other options that I've tried out. I tried out these tan ones. They're made by JYJZPB. And the problem with these batteries is that they seem to last significantly less time than the Sony batteries. I noticed it the first time I used them, it just seemed like the battery meter was dropping a bit faster. So not my favorites. The other ones I tried are these black ones made by I have no idea who. They just say battery pack on the back of them, so whatever. Uh, but these lasted longer. They seem to last about as long as the Sony's. Uh, but there was a problem when I put them into my camera and then if I shoot for a while and try to take them back out, they would sort of stick a little bit in the camera and I'd have to sort of force them back out. So basically the problem is that these tend to swell up. That's why I don't use the black ones. So the small rig batteries were the winners for me. I bought four of them to last me all day. Uh, the fourth one is actually in the camera that's filming me right now. Next thing I wanna talk about here is a product that should probably get its own video. I just haven't had time to use it enough to create a whole video about it, but that is the Nucleus Nano 2 wireless follow focus. So this is of course a mechanical follow focus that goes on your lens, and then you have a wireless knob that you can use to control it. And you can use three of these motors and create a focus iris zoom combination, FIZ, and then you can control all the features of a manual lens remotely. Now. I don't do that because I don't shoot with cinema rigs, I just shoot with this mirrorless rig. The main way I plan to use the Nucleus Nano 2 is to pull focus when my camera is on a gimbal. Now here's the interesting part of all this. I was actually able to get the Nucleus Nano 2 mounted up on my Crane M3S, my tiny little gimbal. This gimbal is actually made for everything from a smartphone or a GoPro on up to small mirrorless cameras, but it's not really made for bigger rigs like this with accessories on the camera. So I was able to get it properly balanced like you're seeing here. So then I could have someone else remotely pulling my focus for me while I run around with my gimbal. You may have noticed that I didn't mount the follow focus in the standard way, which would be underslung with two 15 millimeter rods on a sled. And that's because that's just extra bulk that I didn't want to deal with. The way that I have it mounted right now is on the hot shoe of the camera using a Nicey Rig hot shoe mount for 15 millimeter rods. One more little detail that makes this rig easier to set up is the lens that I've chosen to use. This is the Samyang VAF 35 millimeter f1.8 lens. And what's special about the VAF series of lenses is that they have built-in focus gears. 
So this lens has focus gears going all the way around it, and that means you don't have to add any external gears or any external straps to the lens in order to make the follow focus work. There's a lot more features of the Nucleus Nano 2 that are really cool, but this setup in particular is why I wanted to talk about it in this video, just because this is the lightest, smallest follow focus setup with the wireless remote controller that I've been able to figure out so far. The next accessory I wanna talk about here is actually the monitor that I'm using to film myself as I'm talking to you. My Sony Xperia 1.5 smartphone. So the way this is all rigged up is I have an HDMI cable, a 15 foot ultra thin HDMI cable running out from my Sony a7 IV, which is what's filming me right now. And then that cable is hooked into a Condor Blue live capture card, which goes from HDMI to USB-C. And then on my smartphone, I'm running the Sony external monitor app. So that's what you're seeing right here. This is the external monitor app. And I chose to keep the info display on so that you're seeing all of the info from the camera. That way I know if I'm recording, I know if the sound is running. I also have my earbuds plugged into the phone so that I can check my own audio. The external monitor also has an option to record the screen, which is what I just triggered right now. So now it's recording the screen, including the audio. So if I wanna do an audio check of myself without hearing myself as I talk, which is really annoying, then I just record it like that. And then I go back into the playback and I can, I don't know why it's sideways, but I can play it back and hear myself and then check the audio without having to run up to the camera and hit playback on the camera. So my phone was in this smartphone holder thing like this. Uh, so this is just something from Ulanzi, I think. I'll put the title up so you can know what to buy. But the smartphone holder is screwed into these mini tripod feet. So the mini tripod feet plus the phone holder plus the smartphone makes for a super portable, tiny monitoring solution when I'm filming myself. And the best thing is since this phone holder is a hot shoe mount, if I want to monitor on camera, then I can just screw it in like that and then I can monitor while I shoot. And of course I would probably switch out this HDMI cable for something a little bit shorter and then I would just plug it into the HDMI out of the camera. I'm gonna take a moment now for a sponsored mid-roll break and I wanna talk about these really cool, super tiny portable SSDs. The X9 Pro, two terabyte, that's this one, and the X10 Pro, two terabyte. They are extremely small and portable and high capacity and rugged and weatherproof. And they have really, really fast data throughput. The X9 Pro has a read and write speed of 1000 megabytes a second. And the X10 Pro has a read and write speed of 2000 megabytes a second. So what that means with the X10 Pro is that you can transfer a terabyte of data in under nine minutes. The X9 Pro is 37 grams and the X10 Pro is 41 grams but I can't even tell the difference when I hold them, they feel about the same. They're drop, shock, and vibration proof, and they're also IP rated, and while I wouldn't go swimming with them, they will have some resistance in case you get caught out in the rain or if they get splashed. So for filmmakers like me who are always on the move, I don't need to worry about dropping and breaking, and I also don't need to worry about it weighing down my bag. And for me, two terabytes is the perfect capacity for a week-long shoot. So if I'm going on a shoot for a week and I wanna bring the absolute minimum amount of gear, this is a great solution. They're compatible with Windows 11 10, Mac OS, Android, iPad with a USB 10 gigabits data port, and game consoles with USB ports. If you wanna get the absolute max speed out of them, you need to be using a USB 3.2 Gen 2 port, which currently you won't find on any Apple device. So the maximum speed that you'll get out of your X10 Pro is about one gigabyte per second, which is about half the speed that you're supposed to get. So this isn't Crucial's fault, and hopefully Apple updates their protocols, but I just thought I should let you know. You can get these in one terabyte, two terabyte, and four terabyte configurations. These are the Crucial X9 and X10 portable SSDs. Now I'm gonna to talk to you about my favorite minimalist solution for variable ND filters. So this is the Case Wolverine Magnetic 1.5 stop to 10 stop variable ND. So it starts at 1.5 and it goes all the way up to 10 stops. And that's one of the main reasons why I really like this filter. The other reason is because, as I said, it's magnetic. So you just drop it like that and it is mounted on your camera and then you can just pull it off like that. So in my other gear video that I posted recently, I talked about the Polar Pro Helix Maglock filters, which are another great solution for magnetic filters with the same quick release ability. And the main difference between the case version and the Polar Pro Helix Maglock filters is that the Helix Maglocks are much bigger and bulkier, 
but they lock in place and they will never fall off. And the case filters are much smaller and lighter, but they will also fall off a lot easier. So if they get bumped or knocked or anything like that, or you swing the camera too hard, the filter might just fly off like that. So this is the minimalist solution and the Polar Pro Helix Maglox are the robust solution, if you don't mind a little bit of extra bulk. I have not done a controlled quality test of this variable ND. I've just used a lot on my shoots over the last couple months. I haven't noticed any big color shift. I haven't noticed any softening of the image or any extra artifacts. It seems fine to me. The image does become just a bit warmer overall. I would say maybe two to 300 degrees Kelvin, just eyeballing it, but it's not so much that it ruins the image or even causes any degradation that I notice because a little bit warmer of an image is usually not a bad thing. I'll usually try to warm up the image a bit in post anyway. So I really don't have anything to complain about in terms of image quality. One thing you should know about though, when you use magnetic filters is that you will have to adapt your lenses to be magnetic because lenses themselves are not going to stick to this filter. It won't just mount on there like this. You will need a magnetic adapter, which makes the front of your lens magnetic. I have adapted all my lenses up to 77 millimeters anyway. So the way I've been doing it is first, I step up all my lenses to 77 millimeters. This is a 58 to 77 step up ring. And then on top of that, I put the magnetic adapter from Case Make sure you get the magnetic variable ND adapter, not just the magnetic adapter. They're a little bit different because there's a notch here for the variable ND, it's very important. Then you take that assembly and screw it on the lens. And now voila, all my lenses can use the same filter. And then when I switch lenses, I just take the filter off like this and put it on the new lens like that. Okay, the last thing I wanna talk about here are some accessory pouches that I use to store my gear. So the first set of pouches are from Low Pro. I found these when I was browsing at B&H one day. They have a transparent front, so you can see what's inside the pouch, and you can just unzip them like this, and there is a removable section here that has straps on it. So these straps just happen to be the perfect size for camera batteries for my Sony. So I just put the batteries in like that, and here's the cool trick. When my batteries go dead, I take them off from that side, I flip this around, and I put my batteries in on the gray side. So, dead battery, good battery. Much easier to tell which batteries are still good. And then I put this back into the overall compartment, and I just zip it shut. Like that, drop that into my backpack. The other pouch I wanna to talk to you about isn't even from a camera gear company. This is from a fashion company that I discovered in Williamsburg in New York when I was just walking around. It's called Javelin. So Javelin makes this sort of man purse thing that I'm sure has a much more dignified name on their website. But this is a nylon pouch that you can just cinch close like this. And the thing that I really like about it is just the way that it wears because this is actual like men's apparel. This is not just camera tech gear. So when you sling it over your shoulder like this, it sits more to the back. So you can see it on my hip here, it sits naturally toward the back. So if I'm doing stuff up here with my camera or whatever, this pouch is not in the front getting in the way. It's back here out of the way and all the weight stays here on my back instead of swinging out to the front where it gets really annoying. This is the perfect size for storing a spare lens or two, or in a pinch, I could even drop my whole camera in here the creator of this bag said that he drops his A7R4 in his all the time when he's out on photo shoots, and then he just cinches it shut like that, and then it's protected well enough, and he swings it around to the back, and he can go about his day. In the front, it has this YKK zipper, and I've been using this little front compartment to store my Metro card so that I don't have to take out my wallet every time I go in the subway, and I also sometimes will drop an extra battery, GoPro battery, camera battery, whatever, up in here, and that's super convenient. And then in the back, it has another little pocket and I've been using that to store my lens cloth. And you can remove this entirely from the body strap so that you have just an isolated pouch here, just in case you wanna handhold this or you wanna attach it to something using the elastic band. Okay, thanks for watching. Once again, I am Brandon Lee and this has been my list of my favorite accessories. Be sure to check out the links in the description to all this gear, especially the crucial SSD hard drives. And please click like, subscribe, and that notification bell so you know the next time I post a video. All right, I'll see you next time.